So, so our topic for today is uh, fluid flows. So let me present to you my screen. So good morning, everyone. ng screen Okay, so our topic is fundamentals on of fluid flows So, for this topic we will uh, discuss about flow rates So, there are three types of flow rates We have the, this, uh, the volume flow rate the mass flow rate and the weight flow rate so, uh, what is flow rate first? To define what is flow rate, flow rate is the amount of fluid passing through a section of a stream in unit time. Okay? So, flow rate is also called a discharge. But to, uh, to, uh, to assign a specific term for discharge, that is the volume flow rate. Okay? So, again, that is yung kung anong um, volume ng isang fluid na papasok sa isang uh, cross-sectional area. For this example, ang ating cross-sectional area is circle. Okay? So, ang flow rate, yun yung parang amount ng volume ng fluid na papasok sa isang cross-sectional area. So, hindi lang circle yung ating cross-sectional area. But usually, circle yan dahil ang ating pinag-uusapan dito is pipings na. Okay, so yung pipes ay merong diameter or radius. So, circle yan. So, usually meron din tayong channels na square conduits or tinatawag na square channels. So, meaning square yung kanyang papasukan na pipes or square pipes. So, let's discuss first the first type of flow rate. We have the volume flow rate. So, the volume of fluid passing through a cross-sectional area per unit time. So, again, this is assigned as letter Q. This is, Q is volume flow rate. So, what is the formula for volume flow rate? Volume flow rate is in area times volume. I'm um, area times velocity. Babalikan ko. This is volume flow rate or discharge is equal to area times the velocity. So, what is this area? Again, yung sinasabi ko kanina, kung ano yung papasukan niya na, uh, na shape ng isang uh, pipes or isang channel, yun din yung magiging area or the cross-sectional area. So, for this type of pipes, ang kanyang cross-sectional area is circle. So, meron din tayong square conduits or square pipes. So, of course, yung kanyang cross-sectional area is a square. So, area times velocity. So, ang kanyang possible units is in meter cube per second. Discharge is Q. And for English, that is cubic foot per second. Next type of uh, flow rate is what we call the mass flow rate. Or its symbol is M dot. Okay? That is the mass of fluid passing through sectional area. So, kanina, volume yung papasok sa isang cross-sectional area. Ito naman yung mass. So, ang mass papasok sa isang cross-sectional area is equal to the density times the area times the velocity. Okay. And since area times velocity is equal to the volume flow rate or the discharge, pwede natin siyang sasabihin na mass flow rate is equal to the density times discharge or volume flow rate. So, possible units for mass flow rate is kilogram per second or pound mass per second or slug per second. The last type of flow rate is what we call the weight flow rate. So, that is the weight of fluid passing through a cross-sectional area per unit time. So, basically, kung ang kanina mass, ngayon weight. So, as you can see, weight is just equal, uh, is influenced by gravitational flow. So, we can say that the work flow, uh, weight flow rate is equal to the specific weight or the mass 
uh, at the density times the gravitational pull times the area times the velocity. So since again, yung area times velocity is equal to the volume flow rate or the Q, therefore we can say that weight flow rate is equal to the specific weight times the discharge or the volume flow rate. So possible unit is kilonewton per second or newton per second. And in English, that is pound foot, foot per second. So, ulitin ko. Volume flow rate is assigned as letter Q, that is area times velocity. Mass flow rate is M dot, that is density times volume flow rate. And weight flow rate is specific weight times the discharge or the volume flow rate. So, that are, uh, these are the types of flow rates. So let's have an example first. Let's compute the discharge of water through a 75 mm pipe if the mean velocity is 5 meter per second. So as you can see, ang kanya ang, ang we are solving pipe and since pipe is a circular or cylindrical shape, therefore our cross-sectional area is circular. So, there is uh, water flowing at a velocity equal to 5 meters per second. So, again, ang kanyang papasukan na shape is circle or the cross-sectional area. So, we do have a diameter equal to 75 mm or in radius that is half of the 75 mm that is 337.5 mm in meters that is equal to 0 0.0375 meters why did I convert this one because uh, um, solving area I'm using the formula pi r squared for circle pwede naman kayong pi d squared over 4 okay pwede kayong gumamit nito but sadyang ako ay uh, focus doon sa isang formula formula lamang na simple so pi r squared you can use this one and then you don't have to convert the radius so again we need to find the discharge which is discharge or the volume flow rate equal to the area times the velocity so the discharge is equal to the area of the volume uh, the cross sectional area pi r squared times the velocity 5 meters per second so that is pi times radius in meters to have the consistency in our units 375 meters per uh, meter squared times 5 meters per second so our discharge or our volume flow rate equal to 0 0.022 meter cube per second. Meter squared plus times meter is meter cube per second. Okay, next example. The discharge of air is uh, through a 700 millimeter pipe is 6 cubic meter per second. Compute the mean velocity in meter per second. So this time, we need to find the mean velocity. Since ito, ang binigay niya is the volume flow rate. Like then, it also has a diameter. So, given diameter, which is 700 mm or that is Radius that is 350 mm equal to 0.350 meters. Again, you don't have to convert this one if you're using the formula for a circle by r squared, a uh, pi d squared over 4. So let's draw ano pa? Uh, that is the discharge equal to 6 cubic meter per second. need to find the velocity. Wait. 
formula is Q equal to the discharge or the volume flow rate equal to the area times velocity. Therefore, velocity is equal to discharge over the area. And since area is pi r squared, since this is a circular path, so this is uh, 6 cubic meters per second over pi. The radius is in meters, 0.350 meters. <laughs> this is equal to 15.591 meters per second. Air that has a mass density of 1.24 kilogram per cubic meter. See, this is what is, uh, what is this type of flooring? Flows in pipe with a diameter of 30 centimeters and at a mass of flooring 3 kilogram per second. What are the mean velocity and the discharge in this pipe? pipe for both system units. So, gagamitin na lang natin yung uh, SI units to solve this one. So, let's draw it first. So, since this is a pipe, so circular ulit yung cross-sectional area niya. Pipe. And it says here that it has a density of 1.24 kilogram per cubic meter. So therefore, air is passing through. So you will know the difference why we are solving. How do we solve mass flow rate and volume flow rate? Kung saan siya pwedeng gamitin. So it's either liquid or gas. So mamaya I explain ko yan. And we also have this 3 kilogram per second which is our mass flow rate. So, mass flow rate. Anong pagkakaiba ng mass flow rate sa volume flow rate? So, we need to find the discharge Q and the velocity. And also, we are given na uh, 30 cm diameter. Okay, so this is in radius that is 15 cm or equal to 0.15 meters. Okay, so we need to figure out how to find uh, ano yung unang kukunin natin. Anong unang natin makukun? So based from the formula of mass flow rate, that is mass flow rate equal to the density Discharge. So, magkuha natin yung discharge or the volume flow rate using the given of mass flow rate and the density. So, that is mass and volume flow rate equal to the mass flow rate over the density. Mass flow rate is 3 kg per second over the density. 1.24 kg per cubic meter. So, our discharge or the volume flow rate is equal to 2.419 meter cube per second. Kuha na natin yung uh, volume flow rate or the discharge. How do we find the velocity? Since meron na tayo Q and Q is equal to the discharge is equal to area times velocity, we can find the velocity. Q over Q natin is 2.419 meter cube per second. Ang ating area is the circle that is the cross-sectional area where the liquid pass through by R squared. R 2.41. By R is 0.15 meters. So the velocity is what? 34.27 meters per second. So that's how you solve discharge and velocity in terms of the mass flow rate. Good 
Hello, Pak. Hello, Pak. Hello, Rini. Kak Pak. So this time hindi niya ako narinig So hindi niya ako narinig last time Okay So let's proceed to continuous flow Continuous flow is the principle of conservation of mass So continuous flow occurs when at, at any time the discharge at every section of stream is the same So kung ano yung papasok na fluid, kung ano yung amount of fluid that passes through, yun din yung lalabas. Okay? So that is uh, kahit na magkakaiba yung papasokan niya na uh, diameter. So say for example for this one, mas malaki yung diameter na papasokan niya. And then paliit ng paliit. Pero the mass or the amount of fluid that passes through this channel is always the same kung lalabas siya. So, hindi siya magkakaroon ng, or hindi siya mababawasan. That is the law of conservation of mass. So, for continuous flow, the number of particles passing every section is constant. Okay? So, yung sinasabi ko kanina, bakit tayo gumagamit ng volume flow rate and mass flow rate. So if you uh, if you review your last topic, yung properties natin, we discuss the incompressible fluids and compressible fluids. Sinabi ko dun that the incompressible fluids are the density is constant. So yung nasa picture na yun sa properties when the syringe is enclosed by a uh, liquid Uh, pag pinupush nyo yung syringe, ang syringe ay yung amount ng liquid is hindi na siya magbabago ng volume. Pag hindi nagbabago ang volume, ang density is always constant. Since density is equal to mass over volume. Okay? At pag yung sa syringe naman, yung sa syringe na yun, pag pinupush natin and ang nasa loob ng syringe is gas, magkakaroon tayo ng change of volume. Mapapress natin yung gas. Because gas are compressible fluids. Okay? So density is not, not constant. Okay. Since density is not constant, pag papasok, sa, papasok siya sa isang pressurized na area, or pag babago yung area, pag example yung area is lumiliit or lumalaki, yung density ng isang gas is mag -iiba. That's why there is a formula for discharge And this is a formula for mass flow rate. So pag mass flow rate tayo, we are talking about the gases. And for discharge, we're talking about liquids. So again, kung ano yung papasok, dun, uh, yun din yung amount na lalabas. And sa gases, mag-iiba lang yung kanyang density. Kaya, uh, kaya sa mass flow rate, meron tayong par, uh, meron tayong uh, variable na kasama doon sa ating area times velocity which we call it as a density since density of the gas when is when it is compressed is changing now let's have an example at 20 centimeter pipe is in series with a 60 centimeter pipe The velocity of the water in 125 is 2 meters per second. What is the water velocity in 60 meter pipe? So, again, ang law of continuous flow, kung anong volume na papasok dito sa ating opening, dun, uh, yun din yung volume na lalabas. But the difference is mag-iiba yung kanyang velocity or ang bilis ng pagpasok because of its area. If we compare it to our real-life setting, if meron tayong hose or nagdidilig tayo, 
pag uh, hindi natin tinatakpan yung butas, maliit lang siya, parang ang velocity ng tubig is ano lang, uh, steady lang. Pero pag tinakpan natin yung butas, like for example, ito tatakpan natin yung butas sa isang hose, ang velocity is tataas, right? So the more bigger the area or the bigger the area, the lower the velocity. Okay? So sa kung malaki yung butas dito, maliit lang yung velocity. Pag pag pinalitan natin yung butas, ang velocity is lalaki. So tingnan natin dito sa ating example. So expected yung velocity natin is mas malaki since the ang butas dito is mas maliit. Okay? So that is the relationship between the cross-sectional area through the velocity. So since we are talking about water, again, that is incompressible. Ang formula ng incompressible continuous flow is Q1 equal to Q2. So for compressible naman sa gas, that is mass flow rate equal to mass flow rate 2. Okay, so since this is water, again, we use Q1 and Q2. And Q1 and Q2 is area 1 times velocity 1. Q2 is area 2 times velocity 2. So ang given dyan, ang given natin, which is V1 equal to 2 meters per second. And yung kanyang area or ang kanyang diameter first is 120 centimeter. Which is yung radius niyan is equal to 60 centimeter or that is equal to 0.60 meter. Okay, sa second channel, the velocity is unknown. But the diameter here is very small, which is 60 centimeter. Therefore, the radius for this one is equal to 30 centimeter. And in meters, that is 0.30 meters. So again, this is, uh, we need to find V2. So V2 is equal to area 1 times velocity 1 over area 2. So area 1 is pi r1 squared okay since this is a pipe circle yan times the velocity 1 and area 2 is pi r2 squared so pi r is 0.60 squared times velocity 1 that is 2 meters per second over the radius at the second point which is 0.30 meters squared. So the velocity 2 is 8 meters per second. Okay. Okay, uulitin ko. As you can see, mas malaki yung butas, maliit yung velocity. Kung maliit yung butas, maliit yung diameter, ang velocity is lalaki. So that is the concept of continuous flow and the relationship between velocity and its cross-sectional area. Okay, let's try example number two. Gas flow through a square conduit. Again, this is a square channel. So, hindi na siya pipe or hindi na siya yung circular pipe. At one point along the conduit, the conduit sides are 0.10 and the velocity is 7.55. The density of the gas is 1.09. At the second point, the conduit sides are 0.250. May drawing ba ko dito? And the velocity is 2.02 .02 at that second point. Let's have, uh, let's find the density of the second point. Well, let's draw it first para mas maintindihan. So this is a square channel. So this is not a circular pipe. I 
So say for example, ito yung square conjugate or square channel. So at first point, this point here, pag napasok yung isang, ano nga to? Gas. Okay? Since we're talking about gas, the formula for the continuous flow will be mass flow rate 1 equal to the mass flow rate 2. Bakit nga? Because mass is affected, or the gas is affected by its density. So when you compress a gas, the density will change. So we use mass flow rate for gas and volume flow rate for liquid. So meron siyang sides at the first one. This side here is 0.10 meters. So this is a square, meaning all the sides are equal. And the velocity for this one is... This one is 7.55. Okay, and the gas density for as the gas passes through this channel or this first area point 1.09. Okay, so at the second point, nag-iba yung channel. Lumaki siya. Ang sides naman dito is 0.250. Again, this is a square, so all the sides are equal. So, ang velocity niya ang is 2.02. We need to find the density at 2. So again, for gases, the continuous flow can be solved using mass flow rate 1 equal to mass flow rate 2. Okay, so solve muna natin yung area ng first point. Since this formula is uh, density times the discharge, right? Density 2 times the discharge 2. So density 1 Discharge is area 1 times velocity 1. This is density 2 times area 2 times the velocity 2. Isolve muna natin yung area at the first one. Since this is a square, hindi na natin gagamitin yung pi r squared. So that is 0.10 meters squared. So that is the area of the square. Or that is area 1 equal to 0 0.01 oh, meter squared. Next is yung area 2 naman dito. Uh, that is 0 0.250 meters ang sides. Ang area niya, this is a square, is equal to 0 0.0625 meter squared. So, yun. We need to find the velocity, uh, the uh, density 2. So, density 2 is equal to the density 1 times area 1 times velocity 1 over the area 2 times the velocity 2. So, density 1 is equal to 1.09 kilogram per cubic meter. Area 1 is 0 0.01 meter squared. Velocity 1 is 7.55 meters per second. Area 2 is 0 0.0625 meter squared. And velocity 2 is 2.02 .02 meters per second. Yan, makukuha na natin yung density. Density is 0 0.652 kilogram per cubic meter. Okay, let's solve another problem. A pipe consists of three successive lengths with diameters 3. So, diameter for this one is 390. 
310 at the second one. And the third one is 260 mm. So, the radius therefore, divide lang ng 2, this na 9,5. Bakit? Dahil circular na siya, we, we will use the pi r squared. Hindi na siya yung square. So, in meters, this is 0.195. So, the radius, this is 155, half of 310. And this is in meters, 0.155. <coughs> Lastly, the radius for this one is 130. In meters, that is 0.130. Okay, with a continuous flow through a line of 300 liters per second of water. So this 300 liters of a uh, second for water, that is volume over the time. So this one is the volume flow rate or the discharge, 300. You will see it using the, makikita mo naman sa unit niya kung volume flow rate siya or it is a mass flow rate. And since we're talking about water, water, so, magiging volume flow rate yan. So, pag gas, that is mass flow rate because it is affected by its change of density. So, again, the law of conservation of mass, kung ano yung papasok, yun din yung... Kung ano yung papasok, yun din yung lalabas. But the velocity is changing. So, the amount of water that will enter will be equal to the amount of water will go outside. But yung velocity niya, ang bilis ng tubig na papasok is mag-iiba because of the change of diameter. So we need to find the velocity here. Velocity at 2. Velocity at 1. So therefore, this is 300 liters per second. Okay. I say so we do have a formula volume flow rate equals to area times velocity right so ganun lang din so velocity 1 is equal to the discharge over the area one. So this charge is always the same, 300 liters per second. Convert lang natin yung liters to cubic meter to cancel the units. So area one here is pi, r is 0.195 squared. Velocity one is 2.511 meters per second. Next, this one, B2. This 300 liters per second. Convert ko lang to cubic meter. <coughs> Pi, radius at second point is 0.155. Velocity 2 is 3.975 meters per second. Last one, volume flow rate is always the same. The velocity will be changed. Pi, the radius at 3 is 0.130. Velocity at 3 is 5.650 meters per second. Okay, as we analyze, the bigger the the area or um, sasabi natin kung malaki yung butas liliit yung velocity okay that is the the least velocity we have volume 1 or at this third point maliit yung butas niya of course yung velocity niya is yung highest so mas malaki yung velocity pag maliit yung butas <coughs> Okay.
Okay, so we will talk about Reynolds number. So Reynolds number is a dimensionless quantity that is used to determine the type of flow pattern as laminar or turbulent while flowing through a pipe. So why we are talking about Reynolds number? So ang Reynolds number is a unitless value. So wala siyang unit. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin bakit tayo nagsosolve ng Reynolds number? Because of the value of the Reynolds number, malalaman natin na yung flow ng ating fluid, gas, or liquid, it's either laminar or turbulent. So ano bang ibig sabihin ng laminar ng turbulent? So I will discuss this further in this uh, next slides. But the formula for Reynolds number is velocity times the, the inside diameter or yung diameter inside the pipe over the kinematic viscosity. So we already have discussed these properties, the kinematic viscosity and the dynamic viscosity. So be familiarized with the units for kinematic and dynamic viscosity. So as you can see, yung kinematic, uh, dynamic viscosity is equal to, uh, I mean the kinematic viscosity is equal to the dynamic viscosity over the density. So we could solve also the Reynolds number in terms of dynamic viscosity for this one. Density times velocity times inside diameter or the diameter itself over the dynamic viscosity. So in terms of kinematic viscosity, ito yung formula. So usually yung kinematic viscosity, symbol niya is parang ganyan, yung V. But iniba ko siya because parang magkakapareho siya dito sa velocity. So again, this is in terms of kinematic na formula for Reynolds. <coughs> and this is in terms of dynamic viscosity, the formula for Reynolds. So ano yung type ng flow? We may say laminar flow. It is said to be laminar when the paths of an individual particles do not cross or intersect. So ang path niya is direct. So the path is not messy or the path is straightforward. Okay? So for laminar flow, there is a two convention or there is a two standards on how we are classifying a laminar flow. So sa akin, yung laminar flow, if yung Reynolds number na makuha natin, yung value na yun is less than 2,100 na value, we can say that the flow is laminar. So laminar for our real life setting, example, pag ang tulo lang natin is mahina sa bahay, we can say that it is a laminar flow. Okay? So pag mahina lang yung tulo ng ating gripo, sa bahay, we could say that it is a laminar flow, wherein yung Reynolds number niyan is less than 2,100. So there is also a standard that says laminar flow siya pag ang Reynolds number is less than 2,000. Okay? We are using 2,100 first. So, kasi yung classification niya, may laminar flow, may steady flow, and may turbulent flow. And I am all, I, I am discussing two lang, yung laminar at turbulent. Okay, so I will discuss further for this one, for this type of example. Next is yung turbulent flow. Pag turbulent flow naman is said to be turbulent if the path lines of the fluid passing through a pipe is irregular. So, yung kanyang flow is messy o hindi direct. So, meaning kung sa atin pa sa bahay is malakas yung tulo natin. So, malakas yung buhos ng tubig. So, the Reynolds number for turbulent flow is uh, greater than 2,100. Pag nakakuha ka ng greater than, less than ba yan? Oh, greater than 2,100, we could say the, tur the turbulent yung flow ng tubig sa pipe. So again, there is another standard for it that if the Reynolds number is greater than 4,000, that means this is a turbulent flow. So 
there is a standard that says pag pag yung uh, Reynolds number is less than 2000 and that is what we call laminar flow or walang tulo sa bahay laminar flow so pag ang RE naman is 2000 to 24 to 4000 meaning that is a steady flow yung tubig And lastly, if yung Reynolds number is greater than, ah, less than pala to. Less than. Greater than 4,000. That means, uh, ang ating, ang flow is turbulent. So, I am introducing first the laminar and the turbulent flow. So, iba sa atin, kasi ang... Pag less than 2,000, pag less than 2,000, we could consider it as laminar flow. Pag greater than 2,000, we could consider it as turbulent flow. O, dalawa lang. So at least, ano lang kayo, familiar lang kayo dito sa mga uh, value ng Reynolds number since magkakaiba naman yung standards ng uh, measurement ng Reynolds number. So, ito yung example ng laminar flow. Uh, laminar. Ito yung laminar flow. So, walang tulo sa bahay. And then, yung turbulent flow. So, in between that, meron pa tayong tinatawag na steady flow. So, again, ang i-discuss ko lang is yung laminar and turbulent. Okay, so that, e that ends our uh, first topic for today, the continuous flow, the, uh, the volume flow rate, and the uh, types of flow. So, okay tayo dun. So, let's proceed to the next topic. We also have energy and head. So, energy and head. So, we also have, we discussed already the conservation of mass. There's also a law that states that the ka, conservation of energy. So, kung ano yung papasok na energy dito sa isang fluid, yun din yung lalabas na energy. But, of course, that is just the perfect flow or the ideal flow of energy. Meaning, uh, that doesn't exist. So, hindi ito, uh, hindi ito possible because there is always a head loss upon entering an energy through the water flowing or a fluid flowing inside a pipe. Meron tayong magkakaroon tayo ng head loss. So again, that is the law of conservation of energy. Energy in is equal to energy out. Okay, that is the perfect or the ideal flow. So hindi ito nag-exist. So in the real life setting, meron pa tayo mga head losses or mga, uh, yun yung mga deductions ng energy. So bakit nagkakadeduct? O oh, bakit nagkaka-reduce yung ating energy? It is because of the friction inside the pipes. So yung friction na yun ang nagkakost ng head losses. There is also a reason kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng head losses. Isulat ko na lang. Head loss. Reasons. Because number one is yung friction. Number two is yung design ng pipe. So, there is a pipe na meron tayong um, may elbow, uh, ganun na pipe. 
So, this type of design can cause a loss of energy. Okay? Because as, as a fluid flows inside this type of pipe, may iwan yung energy dito. Since kukuha pa siya ng energy pataas. So, bale, bibelo pa siya and pag bibelo niya, makukuha yung energy. Bale, pag pag-aakyat pa siya ng taas, is kailangan pa niya ng energy. So, the energy here is lost because of the design of the pipe. Pag straight lang yung energy, the more the energy or parang hindi magkakaroon ng head loss or the loss of energy. So, these are the two main reasons ba tayo na, ba nag-reduce yung energy. So, because of friction, this is the major cause of head loss and the design of pipe. So, that is minor loss lang. Ito yung major. Okay. Balik tayo dun sa perfect or ideal flow wherein wala pa tayong kinoconsidered na head loss. Ang tinatawag dun sa ating perfect flow is what we call as the Bernoulli's Principle. So, ang Bernoulli's Principle states that the energy in is energy out. But for a flowing fluid, ang energy is composed of three. Okay? Tatandaan to. This is the velocity head, the elevation head, and the pressure head. Again, velocity head, elevation head, and the pressure head. O, ulitin ko. Yung energy ng isang fluid flow na papasok sa isang pipe or sa isang channel is composed of three. What is that type of energy? Energy velocity head, energy that is called elevation head, and energy that is called pressure head. My next question here is, bakit tinatawag na yung energy nagiging head na siya? Hindi na siya tinatawag na energy. So, nagiging head siya because it is divided by the weight, yung formula. So, later on, I will discuss bakit nagiging head siya. So, usually, yung energy formula natin or yung units natin is in kilocalories, calories, or joules, right? But for our, for our fluid mechanics, we were using energy as head or energy in meters or energy in feet. Kaya tinatawag siyang head. Hindi na siya magiging energy. So ang energy, pinapalitan lang ng term na head. Bakit? So for ordinary mechanics, ang kanilang energy is composed, uh, is sold by the number of the weight, uh, the work times the uh, distance. But for our fluid mechanics, ang energy or yung work na nakukuha natin is paano or gaano kataas nag-flow ang isang fluid. So from a certain point, E1 to E2, ito yung magiging energy natin. Energy is measured using meters or that is why it is called as head. So, ito yung energy ng isang fluid measured by how or how far does it go yung isang fluid. So, yun yung energy natin. Kaya, yung energy is napapilitan ng head. So, how does it, uh, parang, paano siya napapalitan? So, for... Originally, yung velocity head natin, or tinatawag na kinetic head, originally, yung formula niya is what we call the kinetic energy. So, energy is one-half mv squared. Ito yung original formula ng kinetic head, or the velocity head. Ito. Okay. Next, ang second formula 
for yung elevation head is from the potential energy or potential energy is equal to mass times gravitational times the height. So, dalawa yung pre, uh, uh, potential energy. We also have uh, uh, energy using the pressure or pressure that is equal to the specific weight times the height pala. Okay? So, this is the conversion from kinetic energy to velocity head or kinetic head. So, from the formula, 1 half mv squared, divide lang natin ng uh, uh, weight. Okay? Dinivide lang natin ng weight yung kinetic uh, W. Since ma a mass is mass is equal to W over G. Okay? So, weight is equal to mass times gravitational. Pag dinivide natin ng weight, magkakaroon tayo ng V squared over 2G. So, this is what we call the velocity head. So, we are not using the kinetic energy sa fluid mechanics. Okay? So, we're in. This is the velocity, ang V, this one, in meters per second or feet per second in English. Ang G natin is in gravitational pull, that is meters, 9.81 meters per second squared or 32.2 feet per second squared. So again, ang kinetic energy original formula, gagawin natin kinetic head or velocity head. Next is yung dalawang potential energy from the formula MGH and M again is W over G. And to find the elevation head, kailangan lang natin i-divide siya ng weight. Pag dinivide natin yung potential energy original formula ng weight, magkakaroon lang tayo ng Z or the H. Okay? Ang Z is equal to H, this one. So therefore, to find the elevation head, kailangan lang natin ng height or Z. So this is the second energy head ng isang fluid flow. Okay, the last one is what we call the potential energy due to pressure. We also have the specific weight times height, right? And the specific weight is mass times gravitational pull. And W over G is equal to the mass. If we divide this one with the weight, ang matitira na lang natin is P over the specific weight. So this is the what we call the pressure head. So, from potential energy due to pressure and potential energy due to height, magigi na siyang elevation head and pressure head. So, we're in Z is in meters or Z is in feet. And this one, P pressure, is in gauge pressure. So, always remember that yung pressure natin sa isang fluid flow or sa isang conservation of energy is always in gauge pressure. Okay, babalikan natin. Yung pressure na yan is not an absolute, neither the atmospheric pressure. So, it is always the gauge pressure because we are just solving the fluid flow. Hindi tayo nagsosolve dun sa ating, uh, hindi tayo nagsosolve ng atmospheric pressure. So, we are just solving the pressure of the liquid flowing. So, this one is a gauge pressure. Always remember that one. So, this is in Pascal or pound force per square feet or PSI. And specific weight can either be kilonewton per cubic meter or pound force per cubic foot. So, tatandaan. O, ulitin ko. Yung isang energy head is composed of three heads. The velocity head, elevation head, head and pressure head. So, magkakaiba yung formula niya. Ang velocity head, ang formula niya is V squared over 2G from the kinetic energy. Ang elevation head is a potential energy due to elevation. So, ang formula niya is just Z or the height. Ang pressure head naman is the from the 
potential energy due to pressure, ang formula naman dito is gauge pressure over the specific weight. So these are the energy head that we are going to find in order to complete this energy one. So i-add lang natin yan, magiging equal to dito sa e to. So same din dito, B squared over 2G, Z, and P1 over the specific weight. So if this is a perfect flow, ang energy is, ang energy one is equal to energy two. Or that is what we call the Bernoulli's principle. Or the law of conservation of mass. <laughs> okay. So, yun. Energy is equal to the velocity head plus uh, the elevation head plus the pressure head. So, this is what we call the Bernoulli's energy theorem that states that an ideal or theoretical fluid with zero viscosity, constant density, and steady flow the sum of its kinetic energy, potential energy due to elevation and pressure is equal. So, no mechanical energy added from this equipment. So, wala tayong pumps and pipes pa na dinagdagan and wala din tayong friction or due to the, or wala tayong head loss due to the friction. So, this is a perfect flow. Okay. Let's have an example. An oil with a specific gravity of 0.84 flowing in a continuous flow pipe. Find the pressure to without considering the head loss. So again, this is a perfect flow because we are not considering first the head loss. So wala pa tayong head loss. So perfect flow or the, what we call, the Bernoulli's principle. So since this is a perfect flow, therefore Q1 here um, I mean, energy 1 here is equal to the energy 2. So, the formula is energy 1 equal to energy 2. Again, an energy of a moving fluid is composed of 3. The velocity head plus the elevation head plus the pressure head equal to the velocity head or the kinetic head at point 2 plus the pressure at uh, the elevation head at point 2 plus the pressure head at point 2. So based from the given, ano lang yung kulang dito? Ano wala natin dito? This is uh, for uh, point 0.1 at point 0.1 Meron tayong, uh, oh bad, dito, Z1. Z1 is, this is the height, 3.5. So, this is the datum or the reference point for the height. Again, this is the datum. So, where Z1 is 3.5. And Z2 here from the datum is 1.2. Or the datum is from the ground. Yun, yung reference natin dito. Also, we have P1 that is 450 kilopascal. And we also have a discharge at point 1 or volume flow rate 2.3 liters per second. Ano pa? Uh, diameter 1. This one at point 1 is 150 mm. Again, convert ko lang siya sa radius. That is 0.70 or 75 mm. Or that is equal to 0 0.075 meters. Kinonvert ko siya kasi kukuha tayo ng cross-sectional area in circle since this is a pipe. Tama. So, at point 2 naman, ito yung hinahanap. Find the pressure 2. And the discharge at point 1 to point 2 is always the same. Bakit nga? That is the law of conservation of mass. So, kung anong amount lang ng energy yung papasok dito, yun lang din yung, I, I mean, anong amount ng 
tubig na papasok dito, yun lang din yung amount na lalabas. So, therefore, equal lang yung Q2 sa Q1. That is the what we call the continuous flow. Sa topic natin kanina. Diameter 2 is 250 mm. In radius, that is divided by 2, 125 mm. Or that is equal to... Point one two five meters. Okay, gets yon. So, ano pa dito yung kulang natin? Ano pa yung wala dito? Based from the given. Based from the given is wala yung saan dito yung variable na wala pa. Pero hindi pa. Hindi pa natin nakikita. Malalaman na natin yung specific weight since the meron tayong binigay na SG, SG ng oil. So oil pa lang pumasok din dito, hindi tubig. Okay, rinig pa ba ako? Ako na lang. Rinig po, sir. Okay. So as you can see, wala tayong velocity based from the given. To find the velocity, again, the discharge formula, naalala pa yun, discharge is equal to area 1 times velocity 1. To find the velocity 1, that is Q1 over the area 1. So V1 here is equal to Q1, but uh, that is 2.3 liters. Convert ko lang to cubic meter to cancel the unit. And area in circle that is pi pi r that is 0 0.075 meter squared. Okay, so the velocity one pala natin at point one is 0 0.130 meters per second. Okay, ganun din yung formula to find the velocity two. But we're using the density, uh, the Q2 which is equal to Q1 or the discharge one the area at 2. The velocity here is equal to 2.3 liters convert ko lang to cubic meter. Area 2 is pi. Ang radius 2 is 0.125. Velocity 2 is 0 0.047 meters per second. So, yun na. Kompleto na, di ba? So how do we find the specific weight? Since SG here is 0 0.84, therefore, the specific weight niya is 0 0.84 times the, since this is an SI unit, that is 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter, or the specific weight of water. So no problem with the specific weight. So same lang yung specific weight. Since oil lang naman tong pumasok dito, oil din yung lalabas. Of course, hindi magbabago yan. So let's substitute. B1 is 0.130. 2 G is 9.81 meters per second squared. Plus Z1 is 3.5 meters. Plus P1, which is 450 kilopascal over the specific weight. Again, that is 0 0.84 times 9.81 kilonewton per cubic meter. B2 natin is 0 0.047 squared over 2 times 9.81. Hindi ko nasusulat yung unit para magkasya. That is 1.2 plus P2 yung hinahanap over the specific weight 0 0.84 times 9.81 kilo. P2 using shift so you will have a pressure to 468.959 kilo pascal. 
Again, this is a gauge pressure, right? So that's how you solve an energy in and energy out. So as you can see, the head here, the energy is converted into head. So ang mga formula natin dito, ay yung mga units natin dito is equal to meters, meters plus meters. Kahit ipagkakancel mo yung mga unit analysis na yan, ang ating units na lalabas sa mga heads are equal to meters. Kasi nga, ang work na nagagawa ng isang fluid flow is gaano kahaba yung kanyang pag, uh, pag, parang gaano kahaba siya pupunta or yung kanyang distance. Or that is why it is measured in meters. So energy is converted into head. So from kilocalories or BTU or joules, gawin natin meters sa fluid mechanics. So this type of problem is what we call the Bernoulli's principle flow or the perfect flow since wala pa tayong kinoconsidered na head loss. Gets ba? Gets naman po sir. Okay. Next is, what if meron na tayong head loss na i-co-consider dito sa fluid flow? So, same problem, but we added the head loss. So, SG oil, 0.84, continuous flow, find the P2 in KPA if head loss is 1.2 meters. Paano, anong mangyayari dyan? So, kukopyahin natin muna itong ating solution since meron na tayong solution sa velocity 1 and velocity 2. And same lang yung kanyang, uh, same lang yung kanyang given. So again, this is energy 1 equal to energy 2. So this is not anymore the Bernoulli's principle or the perfect flow. So energy 1 equal to energy 2. And since we have a head loss, we subtract the inside energy with the head loss. So, yun na yung mangyayari sa formula. Magkakaroon ng additional ang formula. So, from E1 minus head loss, yun na yun yung output ng energy or energy head ang tawag natin. So, same pa din yung formula. The energy is composed of velocity 1 squared 2g or the kinetic head plus the elevation head plus the pressure head so, dadagdagan lang natin ng head loss, which is 1.2 naman siya, binigay na. Ah, sige. So, yun. Uh, again, susulat ko na lang yung given last time. Since same lang naman sila, so, nasolve natin kanina yung velocity and velocity 2. Point So, the specific weight, that is oil, specific gravity ng oil, times the specific weight of the water. In meters. That is 1.2. This is the head loss, 1.2. Uh, velocity 2 natin kanina is 0 0.047. So, ang Z2 natin is 1.2. And then, yung ating P2 is yung hinahanap pa din. And the specific weight of the oil is 0.84 times 9.81. Makukuha natin yung P2 equal to... Uh, 
0.071 kilopascal. Again, this is a gauge pressure. Okay, so that is the difference between a Bernoulli's principal flow or the Bernoulli's or the perfect flow over the flow na meron na tayong head loss. So, ganun yung formula. So, mag-a-add tayo ng formula sa ating energy. Gets ba to? Gets po, sir. Ang difference lang, may head loss ang itong problem na to. So, last topic, um, dagdagan ulit natin yung energy and head loss ng isang mga ma, uh, mechanical equipment. Okay, so yung formula na to is madagdagan pa. So, we introduce first the first mechanical equipment ng uso-uso ngayon or very common sa mga mechanical which is what we call the pump. So, a pump is a device that moves fluids or liquids or gases or sometimes slurries by mechanical action. So, ang ginagawa ng pump is uh, pinupush niya yung isang liquid to a lower elevation uh, from a lower elevation to a higher elevation. So, ang pump is kumukuha ng electrical energy to push the water from low point to the high point. So, yun yung uh, definition ng pump. Another mechanical equipment na pwede natin i-add doon sa ating energy flow is what we call the turbines. So, balik tad siya. Ang turbine is using the water to create electrical energy. So, ang fluid flow from a point higher to lower point, kinukuha na yung energy ng fluid flow and i-convert niya yung i-convert niya yung mechanical energy to electrical energy. So, ang turbines is converting the energy from the water na nagpa-flow into electrical energy. So, ito yung uh, um, mukha ng turbines. And ito pala yung mukha ng pumps, different types of pumps. So, baliktad yung process ng pumps tsaka sa turbines. We also have windmills or we considered it as turbines. So sa windmills naman, ang air na dadaloy doon sa surroundings niya is yun yung magkakos ng uh, magkakos ng rotation ng windmills. And yung rotation na yun, yung mechanical energy na yun, i-convert niya yun to electrical energy. Kaya meron tayong mga electricity. Or sa laon yun, ganun din yung process ng kanilang energy from windmills or from turbines or from the wind energy converted to electrical energy. So, yun yung uh, source ng kanilang electricity sa community. So, how does this uh, mechanical equipment affects our energy in and energy out? So, uh, first, before we uh, proceed to that question, we also have a power inserted or power that is included on our mechanical equipment. So either pumps or turbines. So meron tayong power na i-consider doon. Since that is a mechanical equipment, we also have a power. A power is the amount of energy transferred or converted per unit time. So, for our fluid flow, the formula for power is equal to the discharge times the specific weight times the energy head. So, this is letter E or H. Usually, E siya kasi para mga ano ng energy na yan, but head siya. So, it's either head from the turbine or head from the Head from the pumps. Or energy from the turbine or energy from the pumps. That is how you solve the power 
for turbines or pumps. So, meron ni tayong dalawang type ng power, power out and power in. To find the efficiency or the efficiency of the machine is the proportion of the energy supplied that is transferred in useful ways. So, meron tayong efficiency equal to P out and P in oh, times 100%. And kung bibili tayo, for example, ng isang mechanical equipment, like example, bibili ka ng pumps. So there is no chance na magkakaroon tayo ng 100% efficiency na machine. Kahit bago pa yan nabili mo. So meron talaga tayong tinatawag na errors. Okay? Or the opposite of efficiency. So hindi yan magkakaroon ng 100% efficiency because there is a friction doon sa pag-process ng uh, mechanical works doon sa mismong pump and maliles siya pag bago pa kasi wala pang kalawang yung inside ng pumps for example. But then again, kahit bago pa yan, hindi talaga yan magkakaroon ng 100% efficient or hindi 100% efficient yung isang machine. Okay? So let's uh Let's discuss first why ano yung uh, uh, parang anong effect ng pagkakaroon ng turbines and pumps dun sa ating formula. Again, ah uh, wait. But in this card ko. Again, yung definition ng turbines, it extract energy from the flowing fluid to convert to electrical energy. So, for example, ito yung aking fluid flow. Okay? So, sa turbine tayo ha. So, ito yung fluid flow, ito yung pipings. Okay? Ininsert na natin ng turbines. So, we also considering this na meron talagang head loss. Okay? We're considering this as merong head loss. Okay? So, again, meron tayong fluid na papasok dito sa pipe. And then, papasok siya sa turbines. Ano kayang mangyari dun? So, pagpapasok siya sa turbine, yung energy ng fluid na yon is gagamitin ng turbine to produce electricity. Okay? So, ang energy ng nagpo-flow nag, nag na tubig is gagamitin niya to produce electricity. So, meaning, from P in or energy in sa turbine, <coughs> okay, PT in, since this is turbine, i-convert niya to electricity outside the system. So, ito yung P out or PT out. And this is the HT out or the energy out. O, ulitin ko. So, the power and the energy of the moving fluid is i-convert ng turbine to electricity. Yun yung, ano niya eh, yun yung purpose niya. Okay? So, meaning from the system... Ang system pala is yung fluid flow or the pipes. From the system, ia-out na yung energy. Okay? So, sa system, out yung PT and HT. Out. Next. Sa pumps naman, iba ling ang kanyang gagawin. So, ang gagawin niya is kukuha siya ng energy from the electricity. So, ito yung magiging PP. P, power pump in and energy pump in kukuha siya ng energy from the electrical to push this liquid up to the second point. So, ang out niya is itong pa up. So, that is the HP out and the, and, uh, the energy out and the power P out. Or the power of the pump out and the energy of the pump out. So, yun yung pagkakaibahan niya. So, ang outside ng isang pump is yung energy in 
and yung inside ng kanyang system is yung energy out at saka yung power out. So, balik tayo sa original formula. E1 is equal to E2. Next is meron tayong i-consider na head loss. So, isasubtract natin yung E1 sa head loss. <coughs> Next is dadagdagan pa natin ng turbine. Example, dadagdagan natin ng turbine. So, minus HT. Bakit naging minus? The question is, bakit naging subtraction? Nagiging subtraction siya because the energy from the system is kinukuha ng turbine to produce it to electrical energy. Kaya minus yung HT. Okay? Next. Ano ba yung HT na to? HT out or HT in? That's why uh, parang dinediscuss ko na to para maintindihan kung sa system, ano nga tong HT, in or out. Again, ang system is the flow with flow. So ito lang yung system. So meaning sa system, ang HT na to is what we call the HT in. So, okay? And to find PT in this one, kailangan lang natin yung formula na inintroduce ko which is AQ which is the discharge times the specific weight times the H. So it's either HT in or HT out. So this is HT in since we are solving PT in, di ba? Or the head turbine in. So, this is what we call the P supplied for turbines. Okay? Power supplied for turbines. Next, how do we find the power out? So, ano yung power out sa turbine? Or ano yung i-convert niya? I-convert niya to electricity. Ang i-convert niya to electricity from the moving fluid energy is yung P generated. Or is what we call the PT out. To find the PT out, kailangan, kailangan muna natin ng PT in or which is give, uh, mahanap natin using this formula. So, ang, ang lalabas na PT in, since meron tayong ibibigay din na efficiency, yun yung PT out. Or PT out is equal to energy times the PT in or efficiency times the PT in. So, magigitong HT out. So, this is what we call the power generated and this is the power supplied power supplied ng turbine and power generated ng turbine okay punta ulit tayo dun sa pumps since magkaiba yung pumps sa turbine so again sa system flow ito lang yung included okay so, original formula is equal to E1 equal to E2. We consider the friction, kaya isa subtract natin yung head loss. Again, we now insert a pump. Ang pump naman natin is always positive. That is the energy from the pump. Positive. Bakit naging positive? Dahil kumukuha siya ng energy from the electrical. Ina-add niya dito sa fluid flow para mag-flow yung tubig from the lower point to the upper point. So, yun. So, ang ibig sabihin pala ng HP na to, since this is the fluid flow, ang HP na yan is HP out. Yes? So, that is the HP out kasi siya yung nasa loob ng system. Kanina, ang nasa loob ng system is HT in, right? So, to find the power out, the formula is discharge times the specific weight times the HP out. Of course, because this is a P out. P, P out. To find the value of power of the pump inside or the power supplied of the pump, kailangan lang natin ng efficiency since meron naman tayong uh, makukuha na power pump out. This one, to find the efficiency, uh, to find the power pump of inside or the power supplied of the pump, 
i-divide lang natin siya sa power of the pump generated to the efficiency. So, this is the formula. And this is the power supplied and power generated. So, yun yung pagkakaibahan ng pump tsaka sa turbine. So, ano pa bang example? So, familiarize this formula. A1 equal to minus HT pag may turbine na, minus head loss pag i-considered yung head loss, equal to A2. Pag pump naman yung ginamit nyo, mag a tayo sa energy 1 ng pump. And if we considered friction in this fluid flow, minus HL equal to the E2. Gets ba? So we will have the example, two example for this after a short break. So let's uh, let's be back at 9.15. So magkakaroon tayo ng example for this type of fluid flow. Okay ba yun? Balik tayo 9.15.
Narinig ba ako? Static. Hello, rinig ba ako? Yes. Yes po. So, let us continue our topic. So, before we have an uh, example for those uh, yung pump and turbine, analyze natin yung mga situations ng fluid flows na discuss na natin. Okay, did you see my screen? Saka lang ha, didisit ko pala. Okay, so I'll be sharing my screen a lot. <clears throat> so this is my screen. I hope you can see it. So these are the condition of fluid flows that we already tackled. <coughs> so again, uh, there are three types of uh, energy inside of fluid flows. The velocity head, the and, uh, elevation head, and the pressure head. Pag wala lang head loss na i-consider natin or that is the perfect flow or the what we call the Bernoulli's principle the Bernoulli's law or principle wherein E1 is equal to E2. So, ang E1 is composed of three energy. Next, if meron tayong head loss na i-consider then we add the head loss. I mean, we subtract the head loss from energy 1. Okay? That is equal to energy 2. Again, third case is when we insert a turbine na wala pang head loss. So, if that is a turbine, again, isasubtract natin yung turbine dahil ang turbine is nagko-convert ng energy from the flow, water flow, papunta sa electrical energy. So, kaya E1 minus HT equal to E2. So, pag pump naman na walang friction or walang head loss, that is E1 plus HP equal to E2. And pag considered na natin yung head loss and then we also inserted a mechanical turbine, mechanical uh, equipment called turbine, then E1 minus HT minus HL is equal to E2. And if that is a pump with head loss or meron tayong friction na consider that is E1 plus the head pump plus I uh, minus the head loss equal to E2. So, ang head loss is, is always minus. Gets ba? Yung 6 case. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I hope that you're familiarized with that. So, sinamarize ko na yung ating fluid flows from the first case na sinosolve natin. So, yun. Let's proceed to example na meron tayong turbine and meron din tayong pumps. Okay. So, ito na yung schematic diagram ng problem na to. So, merong tubig na uh, there is a water enters a turbine. So, meron tayong in-insert na turbine. 
through a 600 millimeter diameter. So at the first point, meron tayong 600 millimeter pipe at the first point before the turbine under a pressure of 14 kilopascal. Again, ang kilopascal na to or 14 kilopascal is what we call the gauge pressure. Hindi tayo nagsasob dito ng atmospheric and absolute pressure. It leads to a 900 millimeter exhaust pipe. So meron siyang 900 millimeter at the second point na diameter. So, ang pressure naman dito is lumiit, nagkaroon ng 40 kilopascal gauge pressure. So, a vertical distance from 0.2 to 0.1 is 2.5. So, meaning yung ating yung ating datum is there. Okay? So, 0.2 is 0 and 0.1 is 2.5. And it separates the centers of the two pipes. So, dinrowing ko na and the sections where pressures are measured. So, nagkaganito yung position or uh, design ng piping. So, if 500 liters of water pass through the turbine, so meron palang binigay na Q1 that passes through or the discharge 500 liters passes through each second, so 500 liters per second, compute the, the power supplied or the P in PT in, since this is a turbine power of the turbine in, in horsepower and compute the efficiency of the motor if 19 HP is converted to electricity. So this is the type of problem na magkakaroon tayo during final exam. Okay, so isusulat ko muna yung given. First natin na alam yung continuous flow. Since this is water, we use the volume flow rate. Okay, or this is liquid, we also use the volume flow rate or the Q1 or the discharge. So kung ano yung papasok na tubig, 500 liters per second, yun din yung lalabas. So Q1, Q1 is equal to Q2. So this is Q2 here, which is 500 liters per second. So i-convert natin yan mamaya, yung liters to cubic meter. So for this type of problem, we are not considering the head loss. Tama? Walang binigay na friction and hindi din binanggit na meron tayong head loss. Meaning, saan dito yung formula natin based from the case scenario 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Since meron siyang turbine and wala siyang head loss. What number? Ano kaya magiging formula natin? Number 3 also. Okay, number 3. Very good. So, that is E1 minus head turbine equal to E2. So, sulat natin. Okay. So, that is E1 minus HT. Palitan natin. So, wala tayong head loss. So, ganun lang din. Okay. So, E1 is composed of 3 energy head. The velocity head plus the elevation head plus the pressure head. So, minus HT or the head turbine. So, alamin natin kung anong, ano, tong, hey, ano tong HT, in or out. So, yun yung diniscuss ko kanina. Okay. So, let uh Let us first know that the given, substitute the given, kung ano yung makikita natin dito. As you can see, wala pa tayong velocities. And ang binigay lang dito is yung <coughs> discharge or the volume flow rate. And we know that the volume flow rate or the velocity can be solved using the volume flow rate over the area of the pipes. Let's solve first the V1, velocity 1 and velocity 2. So velocity 1 from the formula Q1. Uh, from this formula, Q1 is equal to A1, V1. So, V1 is Q1 over A1. Okay? So, Q1 natin is 500 liters per second. Convert ko lang to cubic meter. And then, yung area 1 is uh, 600 millimeter, yung diameter, or in yung radius niya is 300 mm. That is equivalent to 0.3 meters. 
kayong ano ha, diameter at point 1. So, radius at point 1 is 300 millimeters. In meters, that is point 3. So, area, this is a pipe. So, circular pi r squared. So, pi r is point 3 meters squared. So, B1 is therefore 1.768 meters per second. Next, sa velocity 2 naman, meron tayong diameter na 900 millimeter at point 2. The radius for that one is 450 millimeter or that is equal to 0.45 meters. Okay, so velocity 2 is Q2 over the area 2. Area ng cross-sectional area that is a pipe, so circle. So velocity 2 is equal to, again, Q1 is equal to Q2. So pag magtatanong kayo ha, palit ulit. Kung na kayo magtanong sa akin, kung hindi kayo nakikinig. So, 1,000 liters. So, cancel. Area is 5.45 meters squared. So, pi r, 2 squared. So, velocity at point 2 is 0.786 meters per second. So, yun. Meron na tayong velocity 1. Meron na tayong velocity 2. Let's convert it. Uh, I mean, let's ask. Uh, substitute the given. So, ang velocity 1 is 1.768. So, di ko na ilalagay yung unit ha para magkasya. Ang 2, 2 times 9.81, the gravitational pull is 9.81 meters per second. Z1, what is the Z1 here? Again, that is 2.5 from the datum yung Z1. So, that is 2.5. At point 2 naman, that is below or the at the line of the datum. Meaning, ang Z2 natin is 0. Kasi nasa sa ilalim ng uh, Z1 or point 1. So, point 1 is 2.5. Which is, ito yung measurement niya. Ito yung datum. And the point 2 is of the same level sa datum. So, meaning, yung point 2 is 0. So, yung P1 pa pala is... 14. This is gauge pressure. Again, this is water, right? Water yung nag-flow. Meaning, the specific weight of water is just 1 times 9.81 or just 9.81. Since water lang yan. Minus HT. So, mamaya, i piano natin yung HT, kung anong HT in yan or HT out. So, velocity 2 is 0.786 squared over 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared. Plus, again, ang Z2 is 0 because level siya ng datum. 0. Plus, P2, pressure at point 2 is 4 kilopascal over 9.81. Since this is water flowing inside a pipe. So, malalaman na natin yung value ng HT. So, ano kayang HT to? So, if you're solving that one using your calculator, makakusolve na natin yan. HT is 3.65 meters. But the question is, what is this HT or energy pump? Uh, energy turbine. Is it an energy in or energy out? If we try to analyze yung sinasabi ko kanina, ang fluid flow... This is HT in and HT or PT in. So inside the flow or inside the system, which is this is the formula for the system, is the HT in and PT in. Outside of it, iko convert kasi niya. So ang outside niya is HT out and PT out. Meaning, since this is the system, ang HT na to is yung HT in. Okay? Bakit ko siya uh, nilalagay ng pag ganito? Kasi magkakaiba yung value ng HT out sa HT in. To find the PT in, okay? To find the PT in, ang formula is discharge times the specific weight times the HT in. Okay? So, power of the turbine supplied, or ang in is supplied, is Q, which is equal lang yung Q, always 500.
100 liters per second, this one, converted water, times the specific weight of water, that this one times 9.81, or 9.81 can be good also, okay na yan. And then, yung HTN is 3.65, or the energy head caused by the turbine inside So this is power in as you can see ang ang malalabas na unit dito is kilonewton meters per second or kilonewton meter per second that is kilojoule per second or kilowatts tama ba ang sagot dito is 17903 kilonewton meter per second or that is kilojoule per second or that is kilowatts to the turbine in horsepower. Convert lang natin yung kilowatts to horsepower. So, familiarize with the uh, conversion factor. So, set 1 kilowatt is equal to I mean 1 HP is equivalent to 0.746 kilowatts. So, therefore, ang PTN natin or power supplied is 23.9989 or 23.999 HP. Okay. Since we need to compute the efficiency of the motor if 19 horsepower is converted to electricity. Ano kaya tong 19 horsepower converted to electricity? Diba ito yung PT out? Right? So, this is the PT out. That is the power converted to electricity. So, meaning, meron na tayong PT in and wala tayong, uh, wala tayong efficiency but meron tayong PT out. So, the formula for efficiency is P out over P in. And Okay, efficiency is equal to P out, which is 19 horsepower, over the PT, uh, PT out. Or power of the turbine supplied, and this is the power of the turbine generated. So, PT out over... Pinig pa ba ako? HP. Opo. So, efficiency is equal to 75. So, times 100 lang ito. 79.176%. So, that's how you solve a problem like this. So, gets pa bagit HT in ito? Ito lang yung most uh, complicated na ano eh. So again, naging HT in lang siya kasi ang binabasehan ng formula na to is yung nasa loob ng system or nasa flow ng pipes. So nasa loob ng pipes is HT in. Pag turbine, ganito yung process. And ang outside is HT out. So baliktad siya sa pumps. So yun. Again, uulitin ko, ang PN is the power supplied. Ang P out is power generated. Look. So magkakaiba, may power turbine supplied meron power of the pump supplied meron ding power out pump supplied and meron ding power out in supplied generated i am in power out generated supplied well, let's solve the problem mm, the second problem 
So again, it is a pump. So hindi ko na siya babasahin. Ah, okay, babasahin natin. A 20 horsepower suction pump at 70% efficiency. So meaning this is a 20 horsepower na pump. Okay? So alamin natin if that is a P in or P out. So at 70% efficiency draws water from a suction line whose diameter is 200 and discharges into air whose diameter is 150. At an osmotic pressure where the velocity in the 150 mm line is 3.6. If the pressure at the point is in the suction is 34 kilopascal below the atmospheric where A is 1.8 below the section of 150 mm line, determine the maximum elevation above B which can water be raised assuming that a head loss of 3 meters due to friction. So first, aalamin muna natin kung ano yung um, given first. So sabi niya, at point B, this is point B and point C, aalamin natin yung height dito, which the water can be uh, splashed out. So at point A, uh, meron siyang binigay na uh, pressure. So this is point A ha. So meron siyang binigay na pressure that is, it says that the pressure at the point A is suction pipe or 34 kilopascal. Again, pag sina, uh, merong additional information, pag sinasabi suction pipe, meaning there is a negative pressure here. Magiging negative siya because the pump sucks water and then splash out water at point B to point C. So, pag sinabi lang dito niya suction pipe, therefore, that pressure, that gauge pressure here is negative. So, yun yung additional point doon. Next, meron din siyang binigay na uh, discharge. Uh, saan yan? Saan yung discharge dyan? Ah, wala pala. So, ang binigay lang is yung uh, diameter at point A, which is uh, diameter of point A is nasaan yan? So, diameter is 200 mm dito. Binigay na. 200 mm. Or in radius, that is 100 mm or that is 0.1 meters. So at point two, at point B and point C, the uh, the line here is 115 millimeters, 150 mm line. Okay, it says that our uh, PC or alamin well, natin yung pressure at point C. The pressure at point C here is sinabi dito the line whose diameter is 200 and discharges into air whose line whose diameter is 150. So, ito, ang QC, diameter at point C is 150 mm, uh, is atmospheric pressure, where the velocity is 150 meters line. So, meron na yung velocity, 3.6 sa point C. Ang tinutukoy dito na description is at point C. Okay? Binigyan din tayo ng pressure na atmospheric pressure. Additional ulit, pag sinasabing atmospheric pressure, meaning ang gauge pressure niya is zero. Okay? So, yun. Additional lang pag suction pipe or suction pressure, meaning that is a negative pressure. At pinasasa, pag sinabing atmospheric pressure, since we are solving gauge pressure, meaning ang pressure na to sa point C is zero. Since sinabing atmospheric pressure. Next, ano pa ba yung given na makukuha natin? PC0. Uh, meaning, ang R nito is 75 mm. And that is 0 0.075 meters. Hindi ba ako maging static nito? wala pa siyang binigay na QA, QB, and QC. Diba? And we all know that QA and QB and QC is equal. 
Kaunti pala is the same as the diameter at point C. So, QB is equal to 150 mm then. Okay, so, sinabi din dito where point A is 1.8 meter below the section B. So, ang A is 1.8 sub B. Ay, ang B is 1.8 millimeters a meter sub B. So, meaning, ang B is merong 1.8 meters So, to find the value of our discharge, since meron namang binigay na BC, makukuha natin yung QC. Okay? Rin, uh, may static ba? Oh? Static ba? Hindi kasi ako makapag-charge. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, QC is equal to uh, AC times BC, right? Area of the point C times the velocity at point C. So, we can find QC by area, that is pi, ang R ng point C is 0 0.075. Pi R squared times BC, which is 3.6 meters per second. So, therefore, QC here is equal to uh, 0 0.064 meter cube per second. So, therefore, this is equal to QA and this is equal to QB. So, meron na tayong value ng QA, QB, and QC since equal lang yan. So, the amount of fluid flow, volume flow rate, is equal to the amount that will go outside. So, malalaman na natin yung VA and VB. Okay? So, QA is 0 0.064 and yung area at point A is pi, ang R niya is 0.1 squared. So, VA is 2.1 2.0 per second. Okay, ba't hindi ko na kinuha yung QB? Ang sinabi niya kasi dito, from point B to point C, same lang yung diameter niya. Okay? 150 mm. So, meaning, same lang din yung velocity at point B and point C. So, magkakaiba kasi yung velocity pag uh, different yung diameters. So, let's try to... What formula kaya yung babagay dito sa problem na to? So, E1. We add the pump. Positive yung pump. Again, we assume that this, that this has a head loss due to friction. So, meron tayong minus HL equal to E2. Again, again parang ano to siya? Prob Case number 6. Ito, with pump and HL. Yun. So, again, this E1 is composed of 3 B1 squared over 2G plus Z sub 1 plus P1 over the specific weight plus HP minus head loss na binigay mm, equal to B sub 2 squared over 2G plus Z sub 2 plus P sub 2 over the specific weight. Okay, ang V sub 1 natin, or V sub A pala to, okay, A, and this is point C. Palitan natin. So, energy from point A to point C. Maka hindi na tayo aabot. So, ang energy from point A, velocity A is 2.025 squared, that is the velocity at point A, times 2 times 9.81 plus Z sub 1. Ang A is below the datum or meaning ang A natin is 0, okay? Teka lang ha, kailangan ko talaga mag-charge sa B. Plus 0, plus, this is point A, point A. So, 
pressure at point A is negative 34 over the specific weight of the water. Water ba to? Oh yes, water yung pumasok niya. That is 9.81 kN per cubic meter. Plus HP, ito yung una natin kukunin, minus HL na 3 meters. This one. V sub 2 naman natin, or the V sub C. This is the C sub C. And this is the V sub C. V sub C natin is 3.6 squared over 2 times 9.81 na G. Ang Z sub C from the datum is 1.8 times H. Ang hinanap natin yung H. Ang HP makukuha natin using the efficiency and the energy 20 horsepower. So, ang VC, uh, that is 0 over 9.81 or that is equal to 0. So, first we need to find the HP. Okay. Aalamin muna natin kung ano yung HP out or HP in. So, hindi natin, kukunin natin itong ano na to. View na yan. So, pump. Um, the pump will use the energy from the uh, electricity to push water. Okay? So, meaning, this is uh, based from our discussion kanina. So, ang energy from the electrical ang gagamitin natin para i-push yung tubig pataas. So, this is HP in N H um, the P P in. So, ang sa loob ng ating system, ito yung system, the formula. Ang loob nito is the HP out. So, yung power generated and the the power of the pump generated. So, meaning sa loob pala ng system o sa loob ng fluid flow sa pump, itong HP na to is what we call the HP out. Okay? So, this is the HP out. So, we are solving the HP out. So, meaning ang sin ang Ang given na to is the PT in. Okay. So, next is we need to find the PT out. PT out is equal to the Q times the specific weight times the HP out. Okay. So, to find the PT out, okay, to find it, Meron naman tayong Q and meron tayong specific weight. So, HP out is equal to PT out over Q times the specific weight. So, HP out here is equal to PT out is um, ano pa ba yung PT out? Wait. Uh, kukunin muna natin yung PT out using efficiency. So, ang efficiency is equal to Efficiency is equal to PT out a P, PT out P, Since this is pump PP out And the, the power of the pump inside And efficiency is 0.70 Right? The 0.70 The power P out is to be found or the power P in is 20 horsepower. So, P, P out is equal to 14 horsepower. Power generated. Okay. So, meron na tayong power generated which is 14 horsepower. Makukuha na natin yung HP out. Ang Q natin dyan is itong Q natin 
which is equal to QA, QB, and QC, which is 0 0.064 cubic meters per second. Then, yung ating specific weight of water, 9.81. So, ang HP out pala natin is equal to 16.735 meters. So, this is 16.735 meters. So, malalaman na natin kung anong distance ng tubig papalabas from point B to point C. So, therefore, the value of H here is equal to, using calculator, the value of H here is equal to 8.017 meters. Okay, ulitin ko ha. So, the formula we are using is AA plus HP minus HL equal to AC. So, ang HP na to is the HP out. Okay? So, lagi na yung tatandaan. Pag pump, ang HP na yan is out. Pag turbine, ang HP na to is in. Okay? So, explanation. This is the explanation. So, ang energy... It's composed of three, kinetic, the elevation, and the pressure. So, substitute muna dyan. So, malalaman natin na wala tayong VA, isasob muna natin yung VA. And since ang binigay lang natin is V sub C, and we all know that the discharge at point A, point B, and point C is equal, kukunin natin yung discharge at point C from VC. Since the uh, formula ng UC is AC times BC. So, ang discharge at point C, malalaman natin by multiplying the area of the circle with the diameter of point C, which is 0 0.075 meters, squared times 3.6 na velocity. So, equal lang yung QA, QB, and QC. Lahat ng Q is equal, okay, for this type of flow. So, makukuha na natin yung QA. Ang QA is 0 0.064 equal to all the Q. So to find VA, that is QA over AA. The area at point A, that is pi R with the diameter of point A is 0.1. So that is 2.025 meters per second. So substitute the values here. Ang makukuha natin is, uh, ang inahanap kasi natin dito is yung H. Okay, this one, ang H. So, ang point C, this Z sub C, is 1.8 plus H from the datum. Ang Z sub A or the elevation from A is 0 since nasa line siya ng datum. Okay? Ang P sub A is suction pipe kaya nagiging negative over the specific weight of the water that is flowing on the pipe. So, kaya 9.81. That is water only or 1 times 9.81. Doon sa P sub C naman natin, pag sinasabi ulit na atmospheric pressure ang point C, meaning zero yung gauge pressure niya, zero KPA. Over the specific weight ng water again, dahil water lang yung dumaan dyan, that is 9.81 kN per cubic meter. Maka-cancel na yan kasi zero over a number is zero. So malalaman naman natin yung HP out na to using the given from 20 horsepower, which is the P inside pump and 70% percent, percent efficiency. So as you can see, ang formula ng efficiency is P out over P in. Nilagyan ko lang ng pump kasi pump to. Okay? So P in and P out. Paano ko ba nalaman na ito ay P in? So, again, ang makukuha kasi natin dito sa inside na system is yung P out. So, therefore, ang given pala dito is P in. Of course, hindi dalawa yung P out natin lagi, di ba? So, may P in and P out. So, therefore, this is the P in. Makukuha naman, malalaman mo naman dahil suction pump to. Meaning, ang sinasak na, uh, ito, sinasak na energy. That is the 20 horsepower energy. Okay, so ang efficiency ng pump na to is 0.70 equal to the power 
of the pump generated times the power of the pump supplied. Ito yung supplied 20 horsepower. So meaning, sa efficiency na 0.70, ang lalabas lang na power is 14 horsepower. So meron na tayong power generated na 14 horsepower. So makukuha natin yung energy generated using the formula, this one. So makukuha na natin, meron tayong Q which is equal, and then yung specific weight ng water, 9.81. So, ang energy out is 16.735. Ito na yung isa-substitute natin sa HP out. Okay? Para makuha natin yung H. So, isa na lang yung variable. And then, we could find it. That is H equal to 8.017 meters. So, tatandaan nyo na lang. Ito na lang tatandaan nyo na pag pump lagi itong out, at pag turbine, ito lagi ay in. So, the explanation is this one. Kaya, in-explain ko siya bago ko siya binigyan ng example. So, I hope that you have uh, followed the process of solving. Kahit nakinig lang kayo, I hope that you have uh, parang nag-jot down notes kayo kung paano ko siya sinosolve step by step. Para hindi kayo maligaw pag nag-aaral kayo. Up, ganun kayo. Okay? So, hanggang doon na muna tayo and we we will have another example on Friday and we will finish our final topics on Friday para makapag-quiz tayo on Monday. So, meron pa tayong friction na formulas. Di ba hindi pa tayo nagsasolve ng HL? Ang HL or yung head loss mismo dito is laging binibigay. So sa next topic, meron tayong formula ng head loss. Okay? Ang head loss is uh, caused by friction. So meron tayong formula ng friction para makuha natin yung head loss. So there are types of formula ng head loss. So yun, we also have series and parallel pipes and we also have ito yung mga expected na lesson natin next time series parallel and reservoir so hanggang doon lang yung, yung ating uh, fluid mechanics hanggang doon lang yung topic so on friday we will end our topic for our finals so please study and know the process okay so, I'll be sending to you the PPT naman. So, again, on Monday, we will have our second quiz, online quiz. Question before we uh, end the class. Yes. Ganun din. Okay, so lobat na kasi ako. So if you don't have any other question, then see you on Friday for our last topic. Thank you for listening, guys. Thank you, po. Thank you, po. Thank you, po. Thank you, po, sir. Thank you, po, sir.